Today, I'm going to show you how I rank locally for local keywords online and how you can do the same using ChatGPT. So if you check these keywords that we're ranking for right now, you can see that we're ranking, for example, local keywords in Edinburgh, Gloucester, etc. And these are just brand new keywords this week. We've got a bunch of new other top three positions this week, plus nearly 300 other keywords ranking in fourth to tenth position. The traffic is going up. Keywords are going up. It's all looking good. And one of the best strategies for this, for example, like this keyword as well, is that you can see we're ranking for very localized keywords. Now, bear in mind, we're in the SEO industry, right? So trying to rank in the SEO industry is extremely difficult. You're competing against people who know the game, understand it. Some of the best SEOs in the world are doing this because they're selling their own SEO services. So if you can apply the strategies I'm using today, it'll probably be much easier to rank in your local area using these strategies. And you can automate a lot of it using ChatGPT. You can also give the process to one of your virtual assistants or one of your team members and they can rinse and repeat the same process too. And I'll show you exactly how, plus give you an SOP and strategy today. And if you look at some of these keywords, for example, like Warwick SEO company, we're ranking number four for Stoke on Trent SEO, et cetera. It brings in more leads and sales from Google. Now the trade-off of course, is that if it's a localized search, there's less people searching for that keyword. But if you're selling a service, it can cost a lot of money. For example, it could be water restoration or it could be plumbing or something like that. Then you can reach more targeted local customers. It's a free way to grow your business and you generate leads on autopilot in your area. And let's be honest, if you're doing local SEO, most of your competitors don't know how to do this. And just by watching this video and implementing the actions, you're going to be ahead of most of your competitors. So how do you implement this for your own business? Well, here's what you need to do. First off, you're going to start with keyword research. Now you could use Ahrefs for that, but it's an expensive tool. And as a local business, you might not have the budget to spend that, which is totally okay. So what you're going to do is go onto bard.google.com. This is a totally free tool. And therefore you save a few hundred dollars straight away. And what you can say is give me some keywords related to, and then you put your service in. So for example, it could be SEO and you could say, right, I want to rank for SEO in areas around Manchester and then give me the competition scores and search volumes. And the good thing is, Bard is owned by Google. Google has a lot of data already. So even though it's a free tool, even though it's not 100% accurate, you can still do a lot of the keyword research using this tool. And then you would say, rate the competition score out five, five being the highest, one being the lowest, put it in a table for me. If you want access to this prompt, you can get it in my free course. And there we go. It's given us a bunch of related search terms in our local area based on the area we wanted to target. So we wanted to target Manchester and it's given us some search terms relevant to that area that is still in the surrounding parts, right? So for example, Stockport, that was actually where I was born. That's an area nearby, Bolton, Oldham. They're all in sunny Manchester, right? And you might be saying, surely it's not that easy to find local search terms like this. Well, let's take a random keyword, for example, at like SEO Cheshire. We'll double check it. You don't need this tool. I'm just showing you how easy it is. You can see the keyword SEO Cheshire is actually very easy. Like I say, there's always going to be a low traffic potential, but there are people searching for this. And let's be honest, if you're a local business and 30 targeted customers come to your business, maybe you convert 50% of them, that's 15 new customers coming to your website each month. Happy days. And then you can see, even for a crazy, crazy competitive niche like SEO, which is probably going to be far harder than any niche you're trying to rank in, you can see that the top ranking website only has a domain rating of one. You've got some domains ranking without any backlinks at all. Local SEO is an absolute miracle because it's just so easy and it's such a good opportunity and most companies in your area won't be targeting keywords like this. And you may say as well, Julian, you're not living in Edinburgh. Why are you trying to sell SEO there? It's a the thing. People can book in a call for our website. We have the call remotely and you know, I have clients all over the world. My first client was from Mongolia. So if we get clients from different areas and local areas, well, number one, it's much easier to rank. Number two, we can automate it with AI as I'll show you in a second. And number three is way lower competition. So it's a winning strategy. So what you can do now is you can export these to Google Sheets like this. It will open up a Google Sheet. Let's crank it open. There we go. We've got our keywords. We've got the competition score, search volume, etc. And then you're set. And then you remove any of the irrelevant keywords you don't want to go for. But basically this tells us, okay, we need to create a page about SEO in Manchester. We need to create a page about SEO in Cheshire, etc. And you just go through the list and you implement this. Now, Previously, this would have been really difficult, but you can actually automate a lot of the content process and the creation of it using ChatGPT. 
In fact, if you look at the pages that we're ranking for, for example, like affordable SEO in Edinburgh or SEO company in Gloucester, we're ranking number three for that keyword. And then a lot of the content that you're creating can be automated with ChatGPT. And I'll show you how using the processes that we talked through today. So I actually have a template for creating content with ChatGPT. It looks like this. And you can give this to a VA. I'll include it in my free course. But basically the first place to start is always create a title, SEO title, meta description. Include the keyword, but use it naturally, right? And then from here, for writing the introduction, we use a prompt like this. As you can see, you can just copy and paste that into ChatGPT and you would replace keyword with keyword, right? And that's the same for the whole document. So you open up the SOP document like this, click the three dots. You're going to find keyword like that and then just replace it with whichever keyword you want to rank for. So let's say you're going after a keyword like SEO Manchester. We would replace a keyword like that. And now the whole document is customized for Manchester. Obviously, you're going to change up the title and the SEO title, etc. So you might have something like best SEO agency in Manchester like that for the SEO title. Then for the title, you might say something like best SEO agencies in Manchester for the actual title. And then you just have a relevant meta description that's interesting, but makes people want to click on it. From here, you would write the introduction. And the good thing is you can just copy and paste this into ChatGPT because it's already customized around the keyword you want to rank for. And then normally in the articles, I add a table of contents. So I have a plugin called Easy Table of Contents. It's completely free. And then you just insert the short code like that. And from here, what you need to start doing is adding and using your competitors' headings. Now, you wouldn't just copy and paste your competitors' headings directly from their article. Absolutely not. You want to rewrite them. Obviously, if you want to do this completely free, then you do it through your competitors manually. But if you're already using a plus account on ChatGPT, you can go to plugins and then make sure you have WebPilot installed like this. And you would just say to WebPilot, create an outline for an article that'll be around 2000 words. Typically, that's what we find these type of SEO articles are. Then you put your keywords. So for example, like SEO Manchester, based on the top 10 results from Google, right? Include every relevant heading possible. Keep the keyword density high, et cetera. If it adds some FAQs, all that sort of thing. I'll include this in my free course. And then based on the top 10 results from Google, it's reverse engineered the keyword SEO Manchester and given us an idea of the best headings to include in the article. Now you can also automate this with other paid tools like Phrase or Surfer, etc. You've got a bunch of LSI keywords, which you can naturally sprinkle into your content. And then you've got some external links you could link out to as well. Obviously, you have to be a bit careful with that because you don't want to be linking out to your competitors or anything like that who are going for the same keyword as you. But with everything, don't take the idea to the extreme. Just use common sense and you'll be fine. So that's it. And then you'll put the titles inside your article, like so. Proofread the content and you can generate the content for each of these titles using ChatGPT as well. So it's really easy and you've got some ideas of what to include in each section on top of that. Now, I wouldn't stop there. I would make sure that you present the information in the best possible way, whether you're using ChatGPT, whether you're writing this yourself. So I've created this checklist that basically goes like this, right? And you've got the keyword in the far left, so you can put all the keywords for all the articles you're working on creating. And each row and each page should be focused on a different keyword, as long as there's no overlap in search intent. So if you've got best SEO agency in Manchester and top 10 SEO agencies in Manchester, chances are there's going to be very similar search intent. You can easily check Google, see what results it's bringing up. And if it's bringing up the same results for both keywords, then you know it's basically the same thing, the same search intent. And then you can create one article for both keywords. So next up, I would set up the status. When you do actually publish the content, you can insert the URL link here. You would add the date, word count, and the rest of it is just like a checklist. So whether you're creating the content or if you've got a virtual assistant creating the content, you can get them to fill in each part of the checklist to make sure that they're doing everything they need to be doing. So for example, did they scrape the top five articles to get similar headings? Have they made the content long enough? I mean, there's no hard and fast rule for this. So it doesn't need to be 1500 words or 2,500 words. I just typically find when it is around that length, we rank pretty well for each of those pages. Next up, you want to make sure everything's formatted with nice H2 and H3 headings, add some relevant FAQs, make sure that you've checked the search intent. Um, what I mean by search intent is basically figuring out what are people searching for and what problem are they trying to solve? 
And there's two things there. You want to figure out, okay, number one, do I have two separate keywords that are basically targeting the same parent topic? And if so, just create one page for both keywords. So for example, beautiful birds and prettiest birds are basically targeting the same thing. How do I know that? Because I have one page that ranks for both keywords. And even though they're different keywords, they both rank in the same place, right? So you can see my page ranking here for prettiest birds and here for beautiful birds. And that basically means the search intent for the keyword is the same. I don't need to create one page for prettiest birds and one page for beautiful birds. It's the same thing. So make sure you're always checking things like that. Now, on top of that, you want to figure out, okay, what type of information do I need to create when I set up this article, right? So for example, if you type like beautiful birds into Google and you can see that basically the top ranking articles are list articles, right? So this is a top 30 article that Google's serving up. That's my site. And then the article above us is a top 10 article. So you know you need to create a list format article to rank. If you created a complete comprehensive guide to beautiful birds, probably wouldn't rank that well because it's not relevant to the search intent. So that's what I mean in this checklist. Then you do the SEO title, description. You want to add some internal and external links. This is something I actually do more for readability and on-page metrics, not for actually ranking the article. It's just that when people land on the page, if everything is on a new line, it makes it easier to read. If it's easier to read, people stay on the page longer and they're more likely to convert into leads or traffic or sales. Additionally, if you're creating content with ChatGPT, there's going to be times when the content is totally irrelevant. So for example, if you look at the title, right, Mastering SEO in Manchester, is that 100% relevant to the keyword SEO Manchester? Probably not. If you look at the top results for SEO Manchester, you can see that what would be more relevant is writing a service page about SEO agencies in Manchester or about your agency that does SEO in Manchester. That would be way more relevant to the article than how to master SEO in Manchester, if that makes sense. So be careful with ChatGPT. You've got to guide it, keep it focused. And then on top of that, I always embed relevant YouTube videos into my article. Now, obviously I create a lot of YouTube videos, so I always have relevant videos, like you can see, that I can post into the article. But if you don't, and you're still trying to rank for a keyword, you could use something from YouTube just to split up your content to make it more interesting as long as you're not embedding videos from your competitors. That's the main thing. And then this is another checklist that I use because if you're creating a service page or any sort of local SEO page, typically you're advertising your business, right? Now, if you're advertising your business, you don't want to be linking to any of your competitors and you don't want to be mentioning any of your competitors. And it can slip through the net sometimes. It's inevitable, especially if you have a team that's doing this for you because they're in a rush or they're trying to just do their job and they're on autopilot a little bit. So you always want to make sure that they're going through and making sure they don't mention or link to their competitors. And one of the things you're going to find when you're creating content at bulk at scale using ChatGPT, if you have a team doing it for you, there's going to be a lot of back and forth and a lot of manual edits. And make sure you always approve their work first, because if you don't, the quality can slip a little bit. I've seen that myself. So it's just something you always want to keep an eye on. But that's basically it. That's my local SEO checklist. One of the biggest advantages of this whole process is the fact that you don't need to pay for ads once you've got that SEO traffic coming in. So previously you might've been paying five or $10 a click or 50 or a hundred dollars a lead. But with this process, you can get leads and traffic and sales in for free from Google using ChatGPT. You can use 3.5 for free. You can use all the systems I've given you for free. And that way your profit margins are higher and you're growing your business on autopilot using the process. So this is just what's working for us. It's bringing in traffic. Now, if you want the SOP for creating content, if you want the checklist for the articles, if you want the prompts that I've talked about as well, they're all available in my free course. You can get it in the comments, but that's basically how we rank for local search terms. And if you look at some of the keywords we're ranking for, you can see that we're ranking for tons of different localized search terms that are bringing in leads and traffic and sales to the business which is absolutely awesome. And if you apply this to your own business, you can do it too. Now, if you want a free strategy session where we talk together about how to grow your business with local SEO, get more leads, get more traffic, get more sales from Google, then feel free to book that in. I hope it helps you too. Thanks for watching.